In our discussion on the benzene molecule, we said that benzene exhibits aromaticity, so it's an aromatic compound. And this basically means that our molecule, the benzene molecule, is conjugated and very stable. Now, do other aromatic compounds actually exist? And in general, can we describe a certain compound and determine whether or not that compound is actually aromatic? And that's exactly what we're going to look in this lecture. So we're going to discuss the four criteria that must be satisfied in order for a compound to be aromatic, like the benzene molecule. So what exactly is aromaticity? So it's basically the ability within the molecule for all the 2p orbitals within our system within the molecule to overlap well distributing that electron density among all the orbitals and therefore stabilizing our molecule. So what are these criteria? So criteria number one basically states that our molecule must be a cyclic molecule. It must contain a ring. So in order for all the orbitals in the molecule to actually overlap, to actually interact with one another, they must be connected in a cyclical fashion, in a ring structure, and benzene satisfies this criterion unlike 135-hexatriene, which does not. So notice in the benzene, all the carbons which contain our 2b orbitals interact with one another because they are found in close proximity to one another. However, if we examine this other molecule, this 135-hexatriene, we see that this carbon and this carbon are very far away from one another and because they are so far away on this backbone these 2p orbitals will not overlap with one another and so the molecule will not be aromatic so this is the first criterion that must be satisfied for our molecule to actually exhibit aromaticity now Let's move on to the second criterion. So the molecule on top of being a ring structure, on top of being cyclical, must be fully conjugated. So the atoms of our molecule must be connected in such a way so that there is complete orbital overlap between all the carbon atoms inside our cyclical molecule. Now, one example of a molecule that does not satisfy this criterion is this molecule 1,3-cyclopentadiene. Uh, so basically we have overlap between these four orbitals here. So this orbital, this orbital, this orbital, and this orbital have good overlap. And so if we examine those orbitals, we see that there's very good interaction between these four carbons between these four orbitals. So we have the interaction between our positive blue regions and the negative green regions. However, this molecule is not fully conjugated because there is this group here. So this carbon that contains the 2H atoms known as the methylene group. This methylene group basically disrupts the conjugation and doesn't allow the molecule to be fully conjugated. And so there is no interaction. Our electric current will basically not flow throughout because there isn't a good overlap between these atoms here as a result of this methylene group that breaks that conjugation. So the methylene group breaks the conjugation and this means that 1,3-cyclopentadiene is not fully conjugated. So even though this molecule is a ring structure, it is cyclical, it's not aromatic because it doesn't satisfy criterion number two. The molecule is not fully conjugated. Now, 
even if the molecule is cyclic and fully conjugated, that does not mean that our molecule is aromatic because if there isn't essentially perfect overlap between our orbitals, the molecule will not be stabilized and will not be aromatic. So to see what we mean, let's examine criteria number three. So the molecule must be a planar molecule. Now that basically means all the 2p orbitals of all the carbons must lie parallel with respect to one another. So they must be found along the same exact plane and the only time that happens is if the molecule basically lies along the same plane that is it's a planar molecule. Only then will the 2 p orbitals actually interact well forming good overlap distributing that electron density throughout the entire cyclic molecule therefore forming a very stabilizing effect so even if the molecule is fully conjugated and is cyclic it does not mean that there will be good overlap between the carbon 2p orbitals for there to be good overlap between the orbitals, there must be, uh, there must, they, uh, they must be found along the same exact plane. So if the orbitals are found along different planes, they will not interact very well. So let's take our benzene molecule, which actually looks something like this, which lies along the same plane. So the benzene molecule contains our six 2p orbitals that interact perfectly because it is found along the same plane and all these orbitals are parallel with respect to one another. But let's suppose we take the two ends of the benzene and we push them, we push this one up, this, this one down, so we create a chain, a chair conformation. So basically, these two, these four orbitals, these two orbitals interact, these two orbitals interact, but these two orbitals, their orientation changes, and so there will not be good overlap between these two orbitals and these two orbitals, and that can break or even completely remove the conjugation that exists between our molecules, and that will destabilize our molecules. So if the benzene was anything but planar, its 2p orbitals would not overlap well and conjugation would weaken or even entirely disappear. So basically the molecule must be a cyclic molecule. On top of that, it must be planar and it must be fully conjugated. But even if all these criteria are satisfied, the molecule can still be not aromatic. And that's because for a molecule to be aromatic, it must satisfy a fourth condition known as Huckel's rule. So the molecule must obey Huckel's rule. So the planar cyclic fully conjugated molecule must contain the proper number of pi electrons, electrons in the pi system. So basically Huckel's rule states that the number of pi electrons in our molecule must satisfy this equation for n plus 2 where n is simply a number that can equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and so forth. So n can satisfy this value here. So basically the smallest pi system must contain two electrons. So if n is equal to zero, then the number of pi electrons in the molecule is equal to two. If n is equal to one, then we have six. And this in fact represents the benzene molecule. In the benzene molecule, we have three pi bonds. So two, four, six pi electrons. So n is equal to one. Now, one example of a molecule that is cyclic, that is planar, and that is fully conjugated, but does not satisfy Huckel's rule, and so 
does not contain aromaticity is 1,3-cyclobutadiene. So we have four carbon bonds, so four 2p orbitals that interact in the following manner. So we have perfect overlap between these orbitals, but we know this molecule is unstable. In fact, it is not aromatic because it doesn't have the proper number of electrons in the pi system. So basically, it does not satisfy Huckel's rule. So if we count the number of bonds here, we have two pi bonds and that means we have four pi electrons, two in each one of those pi bonds. And so that means because this quantity can never equal to four, because it begins with two, then goes to six, then goes to 10, then goes to 14. So basically it increases by increments of four, starting from the smallest value of two, because it doesn't have the value of four, that means this is not aromatic. So, uh, uh, 1,3-cyclobutadiene is cyclic, it's planar and fully conjugated, yet it is not aromatic. It doesn't exhibit aromaticity because it doesn't satisfy Huckel's rule. So these are the four criteria that must be satisfied for any molecule to actually contain aromaticity. So for the molecule to be called an aromatic compound. And our prime example of an aromatic compound is the benzene molecule. Because the benzene molecule is aromatic, it is very stable and it will be unreactive because it will not want to break that aromaticity. For example, if we take the benzene molecule and we allow it to undergo, let's say, the hydrogenation reaction, it will lose that aromaticity. And so it will become relatively unstable as compared to other alkenes. And that's exactly why our benzene molecule is relatively unreactive under normal conditions.